I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna shock all of you. I'm a gambling addict. And I'll pay back. Genuinely, give me two months and I can pay back. And this guy has flown down to her city to try and track her down. And while doing that, even broke into another streamer's house while they were streaming. He was actually on his way to my house with a knife. I was never able to be genuine with people anymore after the fact that I cheated on my girlfriend with people who I didn't realize were even in the first place. So before we get into this video, I just want to say thank you to every single one of you guys. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to make a difference in people's lives and I wanted to help others. With you guys supporting this channel, now I'm able to do just that. So thank you. So this Twitch documentary is about to get crazy. So stay till the end because we cover a list of topics and each topic just gets darker and darker. Live streaming is one of the most popular forms of entertainment on the internet. Countless people come together to watch their favorite streamers in real time. Whether they're opening a loot chest for the highest level of gear or just sitting in a bathtub, these streamers rake in a crazy amount of viewers every day. When I said live streaming, what platform came to your mind? Of course, Twitch. Without a doubt, they are the streaming platform hosting some of the biggest streamers like Ninja, XQC, and Pokemon. Yes. But there's more to Twitch than what's on the surface. Stalkers, manipulators, and some of the most disgusting people are on the platform. So join us as we explore the dark world of Twitch. The gambling controversy. So whether you're for or against it, I think we can all agree that gambling can be dangerous. The rush of dopamine is enough to get anyone hooked, even the people who you would least expect. I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna shock all of you. I'm a gambling addict. Five years ago, it got so bad, I had $100 left in my bank account. And you know what I did with that 100? I gambled it. Whenever gamblers lose, gambling organizations get paid. And trust me, gamblers will lose. In a slot machine, the chances of you winning the top prize is one in 5,000 to one in 34 million. And what happens when these gambling websites try to reach the younger generation? They branch out by sponsoring people to play their games. And these people are Twitch streamers. Some of the biggest streamers on Twitch were paid to gamble live on stream to their audience. They would play these games for their hordes of viewers and bet ridiculous amounts of money which was given to them by these gambling organizations. But because Aiden Ross leaked his DMs, we know they pay him at least $4 million a month. These streamers spend hours and hours gambling on stream that it becomes their own craving. So they do it off stream. Yeah, I, I'm addicted. I gamble every day. I lost two mil month. Really? I lost 1.85 mil month. Because of this insane uptick in online gambling, Twitch faced one of their biggest controversies ever. In September of 2022, the streamer known as It's Slicker was accused of scamming both his community and his friends for up to $300,000. Videos were leaked of him begging people for money. And I'll pay back. Jenny, give me two months and I can pay back. Slicker went on stream and admitted to everything. His reason for the scam was because his gambling problem was spiraling out of control. If gambling could cause this much damage to streamers, what can it do to its viewers? There are so many kids on the platform, and no matter how hard a streamer can stress that their streams aren't for children, they're gonna watch it anyway. Twitch has no age verification system. A kid can make an account with a fake birthday and watch whoever they want. So when they see their favorite streamer having so much fun and making money on these games, who's to say they won't try it themselves? According to the National Center of Responsible Gaming, the young people struggle with gambling at higher rates than older adults, and 75% of Twitch viewers are young. Twitch eventually came forward with a new policy banning most gambling content, but sports betting is still allowed. So I want to ask you a question. Do you think Twitch has really done all they can to protect young people when they're still exposed to gambling? The downfall of Athene. In the late 2000s, Athene was one of the top content creators in the gaming community. He started off making videos of games like World of Warcraft, where he'd play an incredibly exaggerated character. People loved it, and Athene kept on growing. He took part in huge charity streams and raised insane amounts of money for charities like Save the Children. He even became one of their celebrity ambassadors. But in 2011, something shifted. Athene uploaded a weird video titled, Athene's Theory of Everything. The video was filled with religious preaching and strange conspiracy theories. His viewers were confused, but it would only get more confusing. Athene would continue to preach these strange views and would gaslight his audience 
lives if they didn't agree with them. And the funny thing, you'd feel more stable and more in balance with yourself than ever. If you're depressed, depression is gone. You know depression? You deserve depression. If you chase your own experience, knowing that it kills people, your inaction, then maybe you deserve it. Athene would help create something called the Singularity Group. It was a compound for workers in the computing industry. They would move into the building with all their expenses like food and rent paid for and work on projects for Athene. But it was more than that. It was a cult. Not only would the workers not be paid for the work they did, but they would also have to sign an NDA which prevented them from questioning Athene or the organization. And if anyone did this, they would be shunned by the other members and become social outcasts. The environment was incredibly toxic and it shows in Athene's live streams. One of the worst moments was when he streamed with two female volunteers. He made them dance suggestively for the chat and promised that they would dance more if his audience would donate. And whichever girl got the most donations won. She's having some nice dance, nice moves. You're just sitting here like, you know, in the feet. You know, you can always give me a kiss on the cheek, you know. Cheat, 500 pounds, easy. <laughs> <laughs> for $200, he'd be dancing for an hour. So Athene exploited both his workers and his viewers. And as you'll see in this next topic, he's not the only one. This next situation is worse. Arcadum's allegations. Before we dive into Arcadum's disgusting allegations, I wanna tell you guys about today's sponsor. This might currently be you. You drive a car and are paying for car insurance every month. Why? Because if you get into a car accident, you trust that they'll take care of you and your expenses. Now imagine this, you actually get into a car accident, but your insurance company comes up with excuses, downplays your injuries, and in the end, the same company that you relied on leaves you with huge expenses to pay. Well, this happens every single day. And Morgan and Morgan can fight to help. If you're lowballed by an insurance company after an accident, Morgan & Morgan can fight to help get you the compensation you need. When you choose a law firm, size matters. Morgan & Morgan is America's largest injury law firm with over 800 attorneys across America and has recovered over $13 billion for their clients. So you pay nothing upfront for their services. The fee is actually free unless they win. Getting started is super easy. To get a consultation for free, all you need to do is get out your phone and dial pound law or visit forthepeople.com. My link is in the description below. There's a wide variety of content on Twitch covering all kinds of niches and communities, such as the Dungeons and Dragons or D&D &D community, which is a role-playing game in a fantasy world. And one of the most popular streamers in this community was Arcado. This creator was respected in the community until it all came crashing down. Allegations started to come out about Arcado from multiple young girls. They talked about his manipulative behavior toward them. Some even accused him of SA. But the craziest part is that there weren't just three or four allegations, but 21 different cases. But now it seems as if many different situations have come to light as 21 different individuals in the space have come forward with their own stories. The cases were similar. Arcadum would have conversations with these girls through Discord. They would start friendships before Arcadum started to make advances on them. He would say things like, before you try to fall asleep, we could it would help me relax. And when they refused, he guilt tripped them into pitying and forgiving him. I feel kind of guilty. I'm really sorry if I made things weird. I hope you get good sleep. He even tried to control their personal lives, saying things like, you're the only one I want. He manipulated them into believing that he was the only one who truly cared about them. Arcadum posted an apology in an attempt to fight off the backlash, but it just made things worse for him. I have seen receipts from these girls that were so bad they left them out of their twit longer. There was so much more evidence evidence against Arcadum that the girls weren't showing. Since the controversy, Arcadum doesn't get nearly the attention he once got. I hope that this serves as a lesson for him and teaches others to be careful who they talk to online. But this isn't the only scandal like this on Twitch. Recently, there was an even bigger one. Adriana exposes Slick. So I wanna make something clear about this next topic. Please don't take it as factual information. We did the best that we could and we tried to be as accurate as possible, but as you'll see, there's just too many layers to this story. It all started in 2021, when a streamer by the name of Adriana Lee came out with a story about an uncomfortable situation with a streamer named Crazy Slick. According to Adriana, she went to a birthday party and got so wasted that she ended up blacking out. Her friends helped her into a room so she could rest, but Crazy Slick entered the room room despite being asked not to, then touched Adriana inappropriately. The news spread like wildfire. Mizkif, one of Crazy Slick's closest friends, went live to address the situation. We're very 
grateful to Adriana for doing the tweet that she did because she was forced into that position and she talked about her past experiences, which is super brave and really, really hard to do. Ms. Kiff had a Twitter argument with another streamer named Trainwreck, and this story got much worse. Trainwreck accused Ms. Kiff of covering up not just the Adriana situation, but many other cases of crazy slick harassing women on Twitch. Are you gonna send Maya and Mitch to blackmail me like you did those girls to cover up all those SAs? More evidence surfaced against Ms. Kiff, including a clip from his stream. Of what you can deem of it, it's of harassment, whatever. At a low scale, it's not really a big deal. I don't think people really gave a sh and really cared. Adriana then went live and revealed that Ms. Kiff himself sent someone to talk to her. They allegedly told Adriana to cover up what Crazy Slick has done. Ms. sent the most credible, nicest girl on Twitch to talk to me instead of him going over there because it would look better. It'd be better to convince me. What's worse is that Adriana's statement had to be proofread multiple times in order to make sure that the situation was downplayed as much as possible. At this point, Adriana was shunned from the Twitch community because many people didn't think it was a big deal. But then someone else came forward and it was by accident. Minx's accident. Just a Minx is a popular content creator and Twitch streamer. If you follow her, you'll be aware that she recently suffered a manic episode, which is a period of extreme changes in mood and behavior. During this episode, Minx reacted to Adriana's stream and just laughed at her essay situation with Slick. She did not reply. She doesn't have screenshots. But then her opinion changed. I was influenced by friends to believe that what happened to Adriana was smaller than what it actually was. So pay attention carefully because this next clip reveals the puzzle piece that puts this all together. Not everyone's a f like these f streamers that cover it up, aka me and OTK. Ooh, Shana said that one. Should not have said that one. Minx confirmed completely by accident that some people were actively trying to cover up what happened to Adriana. And as far as I know, the situation is still under legal investigation. This controversy wasn't Twitch's fault, but the fault of the people with a presence on Twitch. We look up to these influencers and idolize them, but we forget they're human too. Sweet Anita pleads for help. When we think of stalking, we think of that one shady guy in the alley following a woman home. But stalking can start online too. Almost all of your favorite Twitch streamers have stories about being stalked, including the horrifying situation of Sweet Anita. Sweet Anita is a massive streamer on Twitch who's even hosted the Streamer Awards. Yes. Love you, Sweet Anita spoke openly about her experience with stalkers on Twitch. She said that the stalking started in October of 2019 and escalated consistently. One day I went to the shops. He followed me from my house to the shops. Um, I asked him if he had a knife this time. He stayed silent. Went to cross the road. And as I crossed the road, he gave chase. He ran after me. So um, the people from the shop charged out, grabbed hold of him and pinned him down while I went and, you know, went through this gate and went home and they held the gate closed so he couldn't get past them and he was trying to push them out the way and actually fighting with them to get with me. It sadly wasn't long before the stalker found Anita's house. My stalker started following me around and sleeping in my back garden. He started staring through my letterbox. On top of that, the stalker would constantly send Anita threats through her Twitch chat and the police didn't do anything about it. They didn't turn up for 30 minutes. And even then they didn't actually turn up. What they did was ring me back after 30 minutes to explain why they weren't gonna do anything to help me. Even when Anita was assaulted by her stalker with a witness, nothing was done. According to Anita, when the police finally he took action against the stalker. He was on the way to her house. When they finally went out to pick him up off the street to question him about that incident, he was actually on his way to my house with a knife. And despite that being incredibly damning, they still released him a three minute walk away from my house. The saddest part is that despite all the awareness that Anita brought to this subject, she's still the target of stalking to this day. On May 23rd of this year, Anita posted a tweet pleading for help because another stalker threatened to find her at TwitchCon. I don't want to hurt you or your security. This is complicated. Last week, I could have sworn you would want to have a romantic relationship with me. And this week, I think you might have changed your mind. 
So Anita stalkers are getting completely out of hand, but this next one is probably the worst one I've researched so far. Scariest stalker on Twitch. Another big streamer on the platform is Amaranth. While she's definitely been in some controversy for her content, she's widely respected on a personal level by Twitch and content creators. And this made her a target for one of the worst stalker cases on Twitch. Amaranth tweeted this message. She says that her stalker traveled from Estonia, came to her city and camped out in a hotel with a line of sight to her P.O. box and spent over a month camping out daily at a Starbucks next to the P.O. box and streamed it the entire time. The stalker knew that Amaranth would eventually visit the address, so he waited there for over a month. And despite Twitch taking down his account, he just kept making new ones. And if that wasn't enough, he would constantly harass Amaranth online. He would send her inappropriate videos of himself dancing, and when she told him to stop, he just laughed and responded, liar, liar, fiance. This went on for weeks until the stalker started to move again. He streamed himself walking outside of Amaranth's home, mumbling to himself. This is wrong, he said. I know this is wrong, but I have to. He was dressed in formal clothes, carrying an instrument case. And an instrument case is the perfect shape to hide something dangerous. Then the unthinkable happened. He started to break in. Amranth called 911 and the police took 33 minutes to respond. Thankfully, the stalker was eventually caught. Something needs to change. It's only a matter of time before one of these guys does something irreversible. And in this next one, they actually do. You can't unsee this live stream. In May of 2022, PG, an 18 year old boy, drove over 200 miles to a supermarket in Buffalo. He got out of the car strapped up and ended the lives of 10 people. And the whole thing was live on Twitch. Twitch stopped the live stream minutes after the incident began. It was a horrific event that happens all too often, but I'm glad Twitch stood up and did their part to shut down the live stream. But still, evil people slipped through Twitch's cracks, including a Twitch admin who abused his power. The criminal admin. In 2013, there was a Twitch admin by the name of Mr. Adder. During that time, he took advantage of two small streamers who were both young girls. It's possible that there are more victims who haven't come forward yet, but in 2020, the two girls spoke out. One of the victims claimed that she met Mr. Adder when he was in his early mid 20s while she was about 10 years younger. He used his recent breakup to guilt trip her into talking to him. He threatened her into doing unspeakable acts because if she didn't do them, he would hurt himself. And sometimes he actually would. She finally had the courage to notify Twitch, but when she did, nothing happened. His other victim had a similar story. She was manipulated into a relationship with him and was pressured into doing horrific acts. She even sent him money for food and cigarettes when she was about half his age. This admin that was supposed to uphold the values of safety was nothing more than a creep. The Twitch Monster. In 2015, a Twitch streamer by the name of Dark Aquas engaged in a relationship with a young girl when he was over 21. This girl claims that he manipulated her into a deal where she would do anything he asked, and in return, he would listen to her family problems. The messages he sent to this person are disgusting. He would force her to skip class in school and call him in the bathroom, and he would make her do awful things for him. This girl had enough and decided to act. But Dark Aquas knew their address and threatened her sister. Thankfully, this young girl was able to break free and come forward with her story. On Twitch, these stories are endless, including someone who took it a step further. The Dark Mind of Cryotic. Cryotic was one of the biggest content creators in the early years of YouTube. He was well known for his early collabs with PewDiePie and his iconic voice. How old am I? I see you don't fully grasp the concept of eternity. He would stream playthroughs of games on Twitch and had a huge following. Until 2020. Cry released a video where he admitted to cheating on his girlfriend with multiple girls who were too young. I was never able to be genuine with people anymore after the fact that I cheated on my girlfriend with people who I didn't realize were even a in the first place. This shocked and confused his followers, and this was only just the surface. When Cryotic started dating his girlfriend Cheyenne, she herself was a young girl and a victim of Cry's abuse. There were also accounts from Cry's friends that he was doing ERP with young girls. Some of the screenshots uncovered were disgusting, and it revealed just how sick Cry really was. Since his last video in 2020, Cry hasn't uploaded to Twitch or YouTube, and there are rumors that he's even being investigated by the FBI. Cry's story is only one of the thousands on Twitch.
On September 21st of this year, Bloomberg released an article that revealed one of Twitch's darkest sides. A researcher conducted a two-year investigation and discovered just how many Preds use Twitch to find their victims. The data will shock you. The researchers monitored over 1,900 accounts. These accounts exclusively followed children who streamed on Twitch. These users would join the children's streams and manipulate them into doing suggestive dances and acts. In total, these Preds targeted 279,000 kids. And as of July 2022, Preds found an average of 673 kids every single day. How did this happen? Even if Twitch removes these shady accounts, nothing is stopping them from making another one. Something needs to change before it's too late, but I think it's already too late. But that doesn't mean they've won. If you see people online doing things that hurt others, report it. If you see it in real life, do the same. I know that alone we can only do little, but if we stand together, we can do so much. Visual Venture. Wait, before you go, click this playlist right here to watch more dark internet documentaries because our new goal is 500,000 subscribers by the end of 2023. We already hit 100K. If you're a talented script writer or video editor and wanna join my team, click the link in the description to apply. I love you all. Peace.